Okay, so we're going to start with this, uh, this problem here, asking us to draw the shear and moment diagrams for the beam shown below. So our first step is going to be drawing our free body diagram. So free body diagram is going to be this beam, this beam here. Starting at the very far left, we have six kilonewtons down, this downward force here. And then we have this uh, connection point right here. We'll call this point A. This will be our point A. Uh, and then this will be our point B. Just there, the, this the roller and the connection pin. So we're gonna have an uh, upward normal force at A. Force normal at A. And that's gonna be going upwards to counteract the uh, beam itself. And then we're gonna have, we're gonna have a, uh, a force from this distributed load. But we're gonna wanna find the equivalent uh, point load which for this, uh, this is a rectangle shape, so it's going to be right in the middle. This is going to be the middle. It spans. So our distributed load spans six meters, so six meters, and it is one kilonewton per meter. So to find our distributed or our uh, equivalent point load, we're going to take the distance it spans, six meters, and multiply that by one kilonewton per meter leaves us with six kilonewtons. Okay, and then that's gonna be at this point over here. Uh, it's gonna be in the same, it falls right where uh, pin uh, the roller B is. It falls in the same point. It just so happens to be B is in the middle of this distributed uh, load. So we're gonna have six kilonewtons downward force here and the normal force of B acting against that. Okay, so once we have our free body diagram, we're going to work on our equilibrium equations. So we're going to do equilibrium forces in the y direction first, starting with this far left. Um, we have 6 kilonewtons, so that's minus 6, because it's downward minus, um, plus force of the, the normal force at A, that's going up, so it's going to be positive, um, plus our normal force at B, same thing, it's going up, it's going to be another positive, minus, minus the 6 kilonewtons, this is the equivalent point load, and this is going to be equal to 0. This is the sum, our equilibrium, uh, equilibrium equation equal to 0. Okay, so here we're also going to have our moment equation, and we're going to take the moment, we're going to take the moment at A. So, moment at A. So we're going to say that counterclockwise is going to be positive, and therefore uh, clockwise would be negative. So uh, let's start with this. We have this six kilonewton force. This is going to be it's going to be pushing down, and it's going to be uh, counterclockwise motion. So it's going to be a positive six kilonewtons times three meters because it is three meters from our point A. It's three meters from A, so that's we're doing the force times the distance, three meters, six times three. And then we run into this next point, we're just moving, we're moving to the right, we're moving this way. Oh, I forgot to put this. This is our moment uh, of 36 kilonewtons, or yeah, kilonewton meters. So this is going to be going clockwise. This is also at A. This is also at A. Do not forget. This is point A. And then this would be B. For uh, perspective. Okay, so... And then from here, this 36 kilonewton, uh, kilonewton meters, this is negative because it's going clockwise. It's going in the clockwise direction, so it's going to be minus 36 kilonewton meters. Okay, and then from there we have our equivalent point load. Our equivalent point load is going to be pushing down this way. It's going to want to act. That it's going to bend in the clockwise direction. So it's going to be negative six kilonewtons times the distance from point A. So the distance from point A is going to be the seven plus this three because the equivalent point load is directly in the, uh, the middle of this distributed load, 
and that's at exactly three meters. Seven plus three, 10 meters, like that. And then we have our um, normal force of B, and this is also going to be, this is going to be pushing up. This is going to be in the counterclockwise, so it's going to be positive, plus F N B, and this is also going to be 10 meters away. 10 meters. Okay. So, using these equations, so we have our equilibrium equations, so now we're going to find, we're going to plug in to figure out normal force at B. So when we do this math, um, we're solving this here equation, which is equal to zero, mind you, equal to zero. So we're going to be solving this equation, so it's going to be negative six times three, it's this. Um, negative 6 times 3 plus 36 plus 6 times 10. And then that's all divided by 10, which gives us uh, 7.8 kilonewtons for uh, normal force of B. So then now we have that normal force of B. We're going to plug that into our equilibrium equation for the force in the y direction. So once we do that, forces, normal forces in A. So, so that's going to be um, 6 plus 6 minus 7.8. So that ends, up, that ends up giving us that the normal force in A is equal to 4.2 kilonewtons. So that's where we're finding, we found the forces uh, acting at the important points, we found the equivalent point load, and from there we can start doing our, um, we can start doing our diagrams. So it's a, good, it's a good idea that now that we have our values here, it's a good idea just to redraw our free body diagram now that we have the forces we didn't know before. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we still have six kilonewtons. We have our six kilonewtons here. And then we have our, now we have our uh, force at A. We know what that is. That's going to be 4.2 kilonewtons. And then we're also having, we still have our moment, 36 kilonewton meters. Um, and this time we're just going to, our force B, also we have our force B, 7.8 kilonewtons. And our distributed load. So our distributed load. And that's one kilonewton meter. Yeah, okay. And then, so our distances, remember that from our point from A to our far left, that's three meters. That's going to be three meters. Um, and then from the three meters, it's going to be another seven before we hit, before we hit, um, our distributed load, seven meters. Um, and our midpoint is going to be there. Gonna be there. So our midpoint and F or and B are three meters from the start, and then three meters to the end. Okay. So this is what our free body diagram looks like now that we have um, found our forces that we didn't have before. So from here, it's going to be easy, a lot easier to do our shear and moment diagrams. Okay, so I drew it a little bit nicer so you can get a better visual. But so for our shear diagram, we're going to want to start at this far left point. And we have this six kilonewtons right at the very end. So that means that we're going to start at negative six kilonewtons is where we're going to want to start because we already have that force, that downward force of six kilonewtons, so that's where we're going to start. 
Um, from there, we go over three meters and we're met with this upward force of 4.2 kilonewtons. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna add 4.2 to negative six. And so this is gonna go straight until this point, until here where we go up, we go up 4.2, which brings us to negative 1.8 kilonewtons. So from there, we don't have any forces, there's nothing acting. It's just a straight line until we hit this point here. This point is where our distributed load starts. And so we're gonna have a slope of one because the distributed load is one kilonewton per meter and we're gonna have that slope of uh, negative one, sorry. It's negative one because it's a downward distributed load. So we're gonna have that uh, slope of negative one kilonewtons per meter over a span of three meters because we're gonna get three meters before we're hit with this force. So what that means is it's gonna be a negative linear uh, slope. It's supposed to be a just linear straight line and that's gonna bring us to negative 4.8 kilonewtons um, because that's three, uh, three meters times one and then negative 1.8 minus three is negative 4.8. So then we're met with this upper force of 7.8 kilonewtons. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add 7.8 to 4.8. So that's gonna take us up on the graph. We're going straight up until we're met by three kilonewtons is where we're gonna end up on the, we're gonna end up on this positive spectrum and which makes sense, which makes perfect sense because then we have this other three meters of negative one kilonewton per meter and that's gonna be this straight line bringing us down to zero and that's a great check we always want our shear moment diagrams to end back up at zero when our equilibrium equations are equal to zero so that makes for a good check good good point makes sense okay so from here from here we're going to do our moment diagram which it relates to our shear diagram so for example we have we start at negative six right here, and all this area, this is area under the curve, this is all negative. So that means that our moment diagram, the slope for the first portion of our moment, our moment diagram is going to be negative. And it's gonna be a negative slope of uh, six. So it's negative six acting over three meters. So that's gonna bring us down to negative 18 because six times three, it's um, our uh, slope of negative six acting over three meters. This is a straight line, straight line. Um, brings us down to 18, negative 18. Then we get to this 36 kilonewton meter uh, moment. And that is gonna put us up. We're gonna add 36 to negative 18. Add in 36 to negative 18 gives us a positive 18. So coming right back up to positive 18. Okay, from here we're hitting this other uh, section of non-moving. Uh, non it's this portion where there's nothing really going on, but we're still gonna have a negative slope and our negative slope is gonna be 1.8 acting over seven meters. So this acting over seven meters, 1.8 over seven meters. Um, so we're gonna do 18 minus 1.8 times seven, which gives us 5.4 kilonewton meters. And this is also gonna be a straight line. Straight line. So once we get this point, we hit our distributed load. So our distributed load it's going to be, um, it's gonna be a curve. It's gonna be this downward sloping curve because we have this negative 4.8. Um, thing about it is we're taking the integral of this portion of the graph. We're taking the integral. So this is gonna end up 4.8. We're gonna end up on the graph. We're gonna end up at negative 4.5. And it's gonna be this downward curving. Here, let me redraw that. Okay, so downward curving. That's a that's a curve, downward curving. 
Um, and then we don't have any other, any, anything else added, added on, add, acting on us. But the reason we made this downward is because this is negative. It's this downward curving slope because it is negative. And then we're hit with this positive value here. And that's going to bring us upward curving. That's going to bring us back upward curving to zero. Back up to zero. OK. So a little bit of explanation here. This three, um, this is going to be our slope. So think of it like this. So we're starting, uh, the, our, our equation for this line is going to be um, negative x plus 3, right? Negative 3 plus x, or I mean negative x plus 3. So in simula uh, similarly, our slope here is going to be negative x squared over 2 plus 3x plus c. So we can solve for c. We know you're starting here down at negative uh, good old, uh, 4.5. So x squared divided by 2 plus 3x minus 4.5. So and then we plug it in. Our x is going to be 3. So let's uh, 9 divided by 2 uh, plus 9 minus 4.5. So 9 divided by 2, and 4.5 plus 9 minus 4.5 gives us 0. So it makes sense. That's where we're ending up back on this point here. Um, so that's just kind of solving for the, that's just kind of the way to like check, make sure you're getting the right value. Make sure you're ending up with the right value. And you can do the same thing for here. It's going to be a trapezoidal sum. So you could take either trapezoidal or you could cut it in half. Um, uh, that's for, yeah, if you want to find the integral that could work. But if you want to find like the equation itself, same thing, same method, you'd just be taking, um, it'd, still be, it'd still be negative x, but this time it'd be minus 1.8 because that's where we're here. And then you could just go back and run through it all and make sure that's where you get for negative 4.5. And that's just a quick check. And it works out. They both end at zero. And then you've got your shear and moment diagrams.